Good day, everyone. Ali Safi here from Safi Financial Network. In this video, as I promised, I'm going to go through different cycles for stock market, specifically S&P 500. And we're going to just review some charts. And I'm going to show you four different charts that, that gives us kind of like a macro or bigger picture. What is going on with the market? Are we heading to um, kind of like a big drop for the market as everyone just uh, saying in YouTube, Twitter, and uh, something like that, or or X, I should say. Uh, or we are going to see another um, rally, potentially going to a new all-time high before election and even after election. What's our macro picture or macro picture right now? Um, um, let me share my screen because that's going to be a fun time. And I I urge you to just watch this video completely. We've got lots of good uh, educational materials as well here. All right, so here is a PCC, which is a put call ratio. And everyone just relying on put uh, options and the volume of a put options. Uh, I just want to mention that when everyone is getting bearish, market is squeezing up. That is kind of like a contrary indicator. When you see the lots of options on a put side, this doesn't mean that market is going to go down. This means market potentially will have like a probable correction, something like this, and then short squeeze to the upside. So that's always happening. Also, I should say 99% of the time happen. And this is kind of like an academic chart for put call ratio. As you see here, this is a put to call ratio. This means when this chart, this blue line is getting higher and higher, people are getting into some kind of like uh, call options. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, they are just piling into put options compared to call options. So this means people are getting like bearish sentiment. And whenever they are getting bearish sentiment, look what happened to the market. So this is kind of like, as I said, this is a between 1.2 to 1.4 as like a put call ratio. Um, this is for Kobe in the equities and indices. Uh, when people are piling into put option and it gets to 1.2 to 1.4, market usually form the bottom. So this orange line is S&P 500. And whenever we just get pretty close into sharp sell-off, we are kind of like at a very, very interesting scenario. So this is kind of like along with this. And we are not even at extreme put scenario. We are pretty close to the top put. And whenever we just get into lots of bearish sentiment from people, they're just piling lots of put options into market. Market find its bottom. And usually rally comes after that. Right now, we are at one, like a reading at one, very, very neutral. I should say this is very neutral. Market always keeps its momentum. When it's bearish, it's going down. When it's bullish, it's going up. And right now we are at a bullish momentum. So this means we are at neutral. We are not at the bottom of the market. At the same time, we are not at the top of the market. We are kind of like a neutral position input call ratio so this means market still can keep grinding higher sideways consolidation for a next rally to the upside so this chart tells me that we are not at the bottom and we are not at the top at the same time so market can keep grinding higher the next chart is market breadth this is s p 500 stocks this is the average of s p 500 stocks uh, the blue line is uh, trading above 200 SMA or simple moving average. So this means when we have this number is going higher and higher, lots of stocks are getting into their long-term bullish momentum. This is kind of like a usually bullish, but when it's getting to extreme bullish, this means market is potentially pretty close to the top or intermediate top or kind of like long-term top. As you see here, this is a blue line, as I said, for a market breadth. And this orange line is kind of like a comparison to S&P 500. So whenever this blue line is getting into this red zone, market is at 
potential multi years or multi months top. This is pretty close to the COVID, right? Look at that. So this is kind of like the COVID style. So we just got it. And look at that here, breath. Breath is pretty close to the orange or red bar here, red area, which is kind of like a COVID crash. After that, breath is getting to this red area. And look what happened. It's kind of like a leading compared to that time. S&P 500 keeps grinding higher. And then it reverts to kind of like its top. At the beginning of 2022, when this breath is getting at this top, it was kind of like um, in April, July, which was six months earlier than the actual market top. But it happened. It happened and market just uh, went all the way down uh, from its all-time high, almost a 20 to 25% correction. Even NASDAQ got into 30% correction. So these lines are kind of like an intermediate top. As you see here, whenever market or breath is getting to this area, which is going to be 71 reading, uh, we should see some kind of like a intermediate top sideways down for a correction, 5 to 10%. Then market after that can keep grinding higher. Right now, we just passed it and coming back down to test this area. So I believe S&P 500, still is not at overbought condition. At least based on this chart, we can keep grinding higher to 88 to 100 level. That's going to be kind of like a warning sign for the market. Market is stretching too much and we should expect some kind of like a sell-off from uh, whenever we get there uh, within the next six to 12 months. Right now, even we are not there yet. So we shouldn't worry about like a bigger picture for the next six months or so. However, market doesn't go up in a straight line. It can just have a fluctuation, but those uh, opportunities are coming within those corrections. So whenever market gives you some kind of like a corrective move, that's gonna be kind of like a good buying opportunity like here. So we just had a correction in months of March and April as we expected. And April just uh, going down. So breath was kind of like overstretching it was kind of like a passing this intermediate top, coming down sharply, then getting back up again. So market just goes to new all-time high. So this is kind of like the scenario that I'm expecting. Any correction right now could be kind of like a buying opportunity until breath is getting to 88 to 100 level. When it gets there, so that's going to be a fantastic buying opportunity, uh, sorry, selling opportunity, I should say, because market is potentially at it multi-months not even years top. Next chart is skew. Skew is kind of like indexes, Kobe indexes that whenever skew is um, is going higher, market is going higher as well. Whenever skew is coming down, market potentially is coming down. Skew is kind of like a very, very volatile. So even if it goes down dramatically, it doesn't mean that crash is coming, but this is kind of like a leading indicator and it can give us market with an, Next, I should say, this is a weekly chart. So market with the next uh, four to six weeks, it still have potential opportunity to go to the upside. As you see here, stretch it up. So skew is getting to kind of like important resistance here, 158, but even a correction could be kind of like a market correction for a next kind of like a rally skew topping formation here for a big momentum to the upside. So that would be kind of like, as I said, uh, it's not a warning signal at all. So based on three charts right now, we don't see warning signal. We are just seeing a macro picture is going to be like a very, very neutral, even to bullish. Correction could be bought by buyers, and that's going to be kind of like a good buying opportunity. The next chart is this one, XLY compared to XLP, which is consumer discretionary compared to consumer staples. This is very, very important because market is driven based on consumer discretionary. Whenever this blue line is leading to the upside, this means market stock market potentially is gonna drag up to the upside. And whenever this blue line is coming to the downside, market potentially is gonna follow to the downside. Why? Because consumer discretionary is not what you need, is what you want. And people spending money on what they want. This means still economy is hot, economy is growing, people have extra amount of money on the side to just 
spend whatever they want, going to travel, going to buy luxurious stuff, or even like a, some more clothes, additional food, going to restaurant, and those kind of like a stuff that is called as a consumer discretionary. Consumer staples is whatever you need, regardless if we are in recession or if we are in a good uh, economy mood. Like, let's say, shampoo, detergents, like, like soap, like uh, a toothpaste, toothbrush, whatever you need for your daily routine. And it doesn't matter if you're in recession or not. You still spend money on those stuff because those ones are pretty basic. Let's say very, very ordinary, regular food you have. So this is going to be consumer staples. But whenever it comes to going to luxury restaurant or something like that, it's going to be consumer discretionary. As you see here, consumer discretionary is kind of like, a, I should say, for the first time, diverging to the downside. So this means consumer discretionary is coming down, market still keeps grinding higher. And this happens whenever this top these forms. So this top forms, consumer discretion is coming down, market keeps grinding higher. So this is kind of like, I should say, a warning sign for stock market correction. But this correction is going to be very, very shallow. I should say less than 5%. And when this correction is coming to this area, potentially, even if that happens, Consumer discretion, and we should see that if it gets back to bullish momentum, we can see some kind of like a good development shifting to market structure to the upside. So as I said, consumer discretionary is going to be market pusher to the downside or upside. So right now we should see these pivots as a good kind of like indicator for us. And consumer discretionary is showing us that we are just reaching to another pivot. So if market goes down or sideways for two, three weeks, don't be surprised and just watch this chart, XLY compared to XLP. So when this chart is getting back to the upside, this means market is going to just like get more money. Money is flowing to the market to buy more stocks. And that's how market is pivoting and going back to the bullish momentum. All right. So these are four charts that I just want to um, talk to you about, um, about the macro picture. Let's go uh, to... S&P 500 monthly chart and see what monthly chart tells us. All right, so this is S&P 500 monthly chart. And as you see here, this is kind of like uh, the big recession bottom. And this is in 2009, March. From then, we see some kind of like a good bullish momentum all the way up to 2024 right now. It's been like a 15 years. Market keeps grinding higher. Still, I believe that for the next, I should say, year and a half, maximum two years, I should say year and a half is going to be fine. Market keeps grinding higher. And we don't see a sign of recession based on the cycles, based on the chart. We can't give market um, any kind of like a guarantee or anything is not uh, granted for now. But I should say based on my cycles, as in like a 17-year cycles, uh, we should see some kind of like still bullish momentum is uh, coming to the market. And then we see this chart. I should say the monthly chart is forming pretty nice bullish consolidation here. So months of April, we just got a downtick. Months of May, we got a positive. So selling may go away, which is BS. <laughs> Apologies, but this is BS. That was kind of like the right for old days and market just drowned by or emerged by lots of financial and energy uh, stocks. Right now, market is technology driven. So this technology driven actually just changed the dynamics. Right now, S&P 500 is forming a pretty good bullish momentum. We are above SMA 20, which is kind of like a long term uh, or I should say mid term indicator for us whenever we get below this this means market is in a trouble for a next kind of like a, a two three months minimum um, or maximum it can go to recession for uh, six to 12 months at least downside but as you see here we just passed this scenario in 2022 we just got back above this back test nicely last october and just to keep grinding higher Right now, this is forming a very, very nice bullish consolidation. If you ask me, we're going to see the same pattern here. The market keeps grinding higher for the next buying opportunity. And the next target that I'm just expecting is going to be 56 
to 5,800, which is not going to be far away. I should say two, three candles, two, three monthly candles. We can get there for the next uh, potential big drop in the market, September, October, November. So those three months, especially before election, like the last two months before election, we, we should see some kind of like a volatility for the market. And in the market, if that volatility keeps uh, going down, but hold up some important pivots. We should see some kind of like a next buying opportunity. And I should say that's going to be kind of like a last buying opportunity for a next rally to the upside until 2025, September to October. We should see multi years top in a market. So this is kind of like the update that I have. And it's been six months past from uh, the January, which I'm always coming with stock market forecast. If you haven't seen that, obviously I was right for the first six months. I'm not sure for the next six months, I would be wrong. I would be right. I should say potentially I would be wrong for that one because I assume that market after April, May, uh, potentially June is going to go down dramatically uh, to like a 34, uh, 4,000 to 34, even thousand by end of this year, which I believe right now that's going to be a false estimate. If uh, someone wants to do that, you should be very, very careful because market doesn't show any correction, big correction or even recessionary, um, at least based on the chart. So from the economy data, I don't know about that. I'm not an economist, but from uh, from the chart perspective, we don't see any kind of like a big sign of um, recession or correction. So I should say the next target is going to be 56 to 5,800. But if market just gives us kind of like a drop in October, September, that's going to be another great buying opportunity for the next uh, bullish momentum to, I should say, 62 to 64,000 by September 2025. All right, I believe I covered everything. The next video is coming for gold. Make sure watch that one because the lots of good potential opportunities coming with gold, gold miners and silver miners. Make sure watch that one. Have a fantastic weekend. See you on the chart. Bye-bye.